Hello and welcome to lesson 24, uh, lecture 3, where we are picking up the story as in the year uh, 42 BCE, um, the, Roman, uh, um, the Romans essentially uh, were back to something of an end to the assassination of Julius Caesar insofar as Brutus and Cassius uh, committed suicide. However, if you look on your handout for a moment, you can see that the year 42 uh, was far from uh, peaceful even beyond uh, this time. In uh, uh, Sicily, right here, uh, we have uh, one of Pompey's uh, uh, sons, uh, Sextus uh, um, uh, Pompey, uh, blocking uh, Rome's uh, uh, grain supply. And so there are some very real uh, issues that uh, the uh, triumvirate has to deal with in order to maintain uh, that um, uh, peace and to be able to feed uh, the Roman uh, uh, populace. So in the year uh, 41, uh, we see uh, Antony and Octavian uh, essentially making a deal. And Antony uh, will essentially be responsible for quite a bit of the East. So that part uh, of Turkey, that is uh, uh, the province of Asia and, uh, uh, and Egypt, uh, versus uh, Octavian will be in charge of, uh, of uh, uh, Italy. So that's going to be the assignment that he gets to uh, uh, take uh, uh, care of. And so, uh, um, uh, you know, the two of them each take on slightly different jobs, but their relationship is uh, uh, far from completely peaceful at this time. So in the year 40, uh, uh, for example, right here in... Uh, uh, sort of about uh, almost uh, um, sort of north of Rome, uh, but south of what is today northern Italy, uh, at the city of Perugia, um, there is a huge uh, uh, conflict between Octavian and Antony's uh, uh, brother. Um, so we, this kind of infighting is still uh, uh, continuing um, in this uh, period between even among the triumvirs uh, uh, themselves. And so in the year 40, in uh, Brundisium in southern Italy, the three uh, triumvirs uh, meet up uh, uh, again and make a pact. And it's a really interesting to observe uh, the details of this pact of Brundisium because it has uh, uh, both a sort of dynastic aspect insofar Antony will marry uh, Octavia. You remember uh, this is Octavian's uh, uh, sister, so that's a, a sort of that piece. Um, but also because essentially uh, they will create uh, a geographic division uh, among uh, the, the triumvirs. So how will that look? Uh, we already uh, have seen that Antony often gets the east, Octavian essentially gets the West, so this is the big divide here. And then this area, Africa, will be the territory of Lapidus. So the three of them each get sort of a territory for which they are uh, uh, responsible. In addition, uh, uh, Octavian also has a marriage this year uh, to a relative of Pompeii that's sort of aimed at uh, uh, pacifying uh, 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 some of the uh, conflict going on. And in the following year, in an additional uh, uh, pact, uh, Sextus Pompeii will get some territory. Uh, uh, and after that, actually, Octavian will uh, uh, divorce uh, this relative of Pompeii. So you can clearly see that these kind of dynastic marriages are obviously not uh, uh, love marriages. In the year uh, uh, 38, as each of the triumvirs is off to sort of their own territory, they nevertheless agree to uh, 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 a renewal of the triumvirate for uh, four or five years. And uh, uh, the goal here is to uh, uh, essentially continue uh, the collaboration because none of them is as uh, uh, powerful as uh, um, uh, individually as to be able to take over the whole uh, the whole uh, matter. And if we uh, keep looking at the map and sort of consider uh, this uh, uh, division, right, among the three triumvirs, here is Lepidus, uh, uh, here is Antony in the east, and here is uh, uh, Octavian, uh, we can see that in a way Lepidus was already uh, sort of maybe getting sort of the shortest end of the, uh, uh, the, the, the deal. And uh, uh, in uh, 38, uh, Octavian also uh, marries uh, uh, a woman, a new wife uh, called Livia, who is pregnant uh, with a child at this time. And we're going to come back 
to uh, um, sort of the family tree to understand this uh, uh, relationship uh, um, better. Um, but we see that uh, from sort of from 38 on, uh, uh, Octavian is getting increasingly uh, uh, stronger. And um, uh, in fact, in 37, he is able to uh, install his uh, uh, friend and right hand man, uh, Marcus Agrippa, as consul. And so uh, uh, this is uh, uh, 37 is then another year when uh, Octavian and Antony essentially are making some military exchanges. These you should consider as signs of uh, their ongoing relationship uh, and their sort of collaboration to uh, um, continue uh, the triumvirate. And uh, 36 is the year though. Uh, when Octavian is sort of, the, this is a big military uh, uh, year for him because he finally is able to beat uh, uh, Sextus Pompey in a, in a sea battle right here uh, 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 and able to uh, recover control of Sicily. So that's fantastic. And after Lepidus tries to rise up against him and, and get uh, him out of the triumvirate, Octavian actually takes uh, uh, Africa. And so we see that now the three are kind of down to two. And uh, uh, this means that um, uh, essentially we will see the two of them fight it out for who is more, uh, more uh, powerful. In the meantime, Antony, of course, also wants to be uh, uh, successful, and his plans are originally to, uh, uh, to go out here to the uh, east and, um, and uh, be successful against Parthia. He is not very successful, so he's going to essentially uh, abandon that after uh, this uh, year. And the relationship between uh, 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 Antony and uh, Octavian also uh, declines. And you can already see that in 37 on your handout that I list the marriage of uh, Antony and Cleopatra as um, uh, 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 an event. And I think it's, it's sort of, this would be the moment to uh, ask, you know, what happened to Octavia, Octavian's uh, uh, sister. And the two of them don't get divorced. So this is again, Cleopatra now after Caesar has another powerful Roman politician, you know, that she was really, uh, this was the second one, right? That, that she was able to form a both political and uh, personal relationship with. And uh, uh, this is sort of becoming an increasing uh, uh, problem. And in 32, everything comes uh, to sort of a, a very significant breaking point uh, when not only is Octavia uh, um, um, divorced by, by Antony, but in a big political move as a response to this, um, uh, Antony's will is published by Octavian in the Roman Senate. And uh, I will provide you with a link to a little additional video you can watch about this that is uh, an interesting representation of the political gamble. What Octavian does is that he goes to the Temple of Vesta where supposedly Antony's will is deposited, and then he brings it to the Senate and opens it and reads it. We, of course, don't know if this was the actual um, uh, bill that Antony had, uh, but this is what uh, we will see uh, sort of uh, accepted, given that Octavian will be ultimate winner as the sort of official version of the story. And in that will, supposedly, uh, Antony says that he wants to be uh, uh, buried in Alexandria when he dies uh, next to Cleopatra, and that, you know, he kind of essentially is represented here as uh, someone who is maybe a great heir to Alexander the Great and, and sort of is a Hellenistic king, but it's sort of this idea that Antony has given up being a, a true Roman and is now sort of victim to Cleopatra, who is depicted as sort of this very uh, 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 evil, powerful, conniving woman. And so, uh, uh, this is the breaking point, uh, politically speaking, from which there is no recovery between the two of the three remaining triumvirs. And in the following year, in the year uh, 31, Octavian becomes consul for the, the third time, and he takes on the job of uh, um, uh, fighting uh, uh, Antony for the final victory. This battle will take place, uh, if we look on the map right here, 
in a, a part of uh, 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 Greece, sort of close to uh, Italy. And this is the Battle of Actium, a big, important, significant battle, uh, which is actually a naval battle, uh, which you can see from this aerial uh, uh, photograph of this area. And uh, um, so in September, we are in September when the, the uh, battle breaks out. Uh, between uh, uh, Cleopatra and Antony, who are marked here in blue, and whose uh, uh, ships are essentially coming out of this uh, uh, gulf, but they are surrounded by Octavian's uh, 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 troops and um, our fleet, uh, and he actually has more warships than Antony does. And in addition, he also has uh, uh, the support of his right hand man, Marcus Agrippa. And uh, there is a prevailing wind that actually supports Octavian's troops being pushing in. And Cleopatra and Antony are barely able to break through and escape. And Antony, uh, you know, they are succe succeed in es escaping, but their power is essentially uh, broken at this time. And uh, uh, they will be chased uh, down by. Uh, by um, Octavian into Alexandria, where uh, both of them, Antony and Cleopatra, will commit uh, uh, suicide, and Caesar's only uh, uh, biological son, Octavian, uh, uh, will be uh, killed. And so uh, this is sort of the, the end point of this, uh, this uh, uh, conflict, and it will uh, uh, leave us with uh, only one man uh, uh, left in power, and that is uh, Octavian. Uh, Octavian will soon have to figure out how he wants to sell this new power to, uh, to his uh, 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 Romans, you know, because uh, making Antony a foreign enemy and uh, who is sort of a very Eastern enemy and making him a sort of slave to Cleopatra was a very su successful political move, but it did not provide a justification for Octavian then to take over and become someone as powerful as Caesar was in Rome. We know how that ended for Caesar, not well. Uh, and clearly this was something that Octavian was trying to learn from and figure out how to do. So this is the question we will engage with in the next class, uh, lesson 25, how Octavian was able to sell himself as a singular power figure in Rome uh, without uh, essentially having to uh, uh, be fearing every day for his life, uh, which was a big move on his part. Uh, this is the end then of uh, lecture three of lesson 25, 24.